Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The promoter for Jerry Forrest, Lou DeBella, is unhappy that his fighter didn't get a decision against Michael Hunter when they fought on a Triller versus card, so their fight, the main event of a night of heavyweight action, which was promoted by DeBella himself. Saying on social media that was a BS draw between Forrest and Hunter on Triller Fight Club. Excellent fight, but Forrest beat Michael Hunter just as he beat Jermaine Franklin in 2019. When will Jerry Forrest get his due respect from the judges? Question mark. Hashtag boxing. And certainly on the strength of Michael Hunter's pedestrian performance, there certainly is a good case that Jerry Forrest won that fight. I myself had him winning that fight by a couple of rounds, although I think if you give the benefit of the doubt on every close round, you know, you can maybe make a case for a Hunter draw, but I can't see Michael Hunter having won that fight as one of the judges had him doing so. And elsewhere on social media, Lou DeBella has said the real winner of tonight's Triller fight um, heavyweight main event, and you can see here, a selection of photos where Jerry Forrest is busting up Michael Hunter with that left hand. And certainly that was a weapon for Forrest that uh, was money all night. But he's not going to get that one back. But I think on the strength of that performance, certainly Jerry Forrest will be, I think, as a guy who's, what, maybe top 25, 30, somewhere there or thereabouts, his phone will continue to ring as people want tough competitive matchups for their fighters who are sort of waiting and watching for hoping for something um, bigger and better in the heavyweight division. But he will be, I think, for the next year or two, a guy whose phone will ring because he brings the action. He comes with determination and leaves it all in the ring. So Jerry Forrest, no doubt, will get a payday or two off the back of this performance. Whether it's a third fight with Hunter, because Hunter and Forrest had posted to social media and I've just put it up on screen. So this was after the fight Forrest says who wants the trilogy. I don't know if we need to see it, but I mean, certainly I think he was a bit hard done by in that fight. And Michael Hunter, he's posted to social media after the fight saying, all is fair in love and war. I walk this walk step by step, no excuses, no regrets. My spirit is free. I learned early in life that all I can do is my best, my very best, and if you do your best, the universe will not disappoint. You will stay in line for what is yours, unless you're not absolute in your effort. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and I want to thank everyone who supports the Bounty Hunter. The support team is second to none, and I have nothing but the utmost for each and every one of you that write me and stay tuned. Thank you, hashtag Bounty. So a little bit sort of skirting around the edges of what was a pretty average performance. Pedestrian didn't sort of shape as a top 10 fighter in there. Looked a bit more out of shape than usual. Looked flat and certainly a bit predictable, hittable. And Jerry Forrest, uh, I think, was denied probably the biggest win of his career. And Michael Hunter has kind of basically sort of said, well, the universe was looking out for him, which is kind of a bit of a bizarre response, really, but it is what it is at this point. And he sort of echoed that those exact sentiments on his Twitter as well. Um, meanwhile, Tyson Fury has said that uh, he's not here to talk about him or even thinking about boxing this side of Christmas. I've had a fantastic career, and if I never box again, I'll be happy. Whatever the future holds is a mystery we don't know yet. So those uh, comments made at an MTK Global card. So classic Tyson Fury, a bit cryptic, kind of hinting maybe retirement, maybe something next year. Who knows what with, uh, is going to happen, especially because it's Tyson Fury, because he'll change his mind tomorrow. But hopefully he is active and he has said that he wants to have a fight in February or March 2022. His promoter, Bob Arum, has been talking about potentially Dillian White, but hard to see that happening with the WBC stuff going on at the moment. But I guess we sort of wait and watch and what will be the next thing Tyson Fury will say, because it'll probably de directly contradict what this says. Meanwhile, Deontay Wilder, after his loss to Tyson Fury in the trilogy fight, says that he's feeling great. 
I'm doing great. We didn't get what we wanted, but we still got something out of it. I think we got something even bigger out of it besides just a victory. And that was Wilder talking to his wife's podcast. Um, and this was first reported in the mirror. This here, obviously, a BoxingScene.com article. He says, I'm grateful for that. I'm blessed all the way around. With that being said, it's no complaints at all. We just move forward. You come up to a certain point as humans. We all feel we come up to a dead end or we fail. We think this is it for us. But when you're traveling along your journey, nothing should be this is it. For me, this is not it. This is just the beginning. The best is yet to come from me. Although I have accom accomplished a lot of things, more than I could have imagined, I do still have goals in the sport. And that's why I still have love for it. I'm looking to accomplish the goals that I still have left. I broke my hand, so I'm healing the, in the healing process right now. Once this is over, I'll resume training for sure. Boxing is a year-round sport, so you've always got to be prepared. You've got to stay ready. After this, I'm looking to get back in it. Deontay Wilder. So what those goals are, a little bit sort of vague there, uh, but he says the best is yet to come. But given injury-prone, 36 years old, not completely in sight of a, another title shot just yet. I mean, I think Deontay Wilder is going to have to have a couple of good performances and uh, really turn some heads to get back in the title picture. Not impossible, but obviously uh, he's got to get healthy first. And uh, someone who's looking to come back to the sport is Jarrell Miller. So he's currently on the back end of a drug ban, out for 18 months because he failed a doping test. And that was ahead of what would have been a fight with Jerry Forrest in mid-2020. So he says, back from the deepest part of hell. And if I'm not mistaken, that his ban, which is 18 months, and that was cut down from a couple of years because he took some uh, testing, some VADA testing to knock six months off the time that he would have been out for. So Miller apparently will be returning early 2022. Who's going to take a chance on him? It's boxing. People have short memories. No doubt he'll be with a big promoter in due course. Meanwhile, someone who has just turned pro, Fraser Clark. So he obviously signed with Anthony Joshua's management company a few weeks ago, and now he is signed on with Sky Sports and Boxer. So the post here by 258 Management saying, we're delighted to announce that Fraser Clark has si signed a long-term promotional deal with Sky Sports Boxing and Boxer. Sky Sports have a long-standing history in boxing and Boxer are a fast-rising promotional outfit. So we are delighted that Fraser has such a great setup around him. Stay tuned for news on his debut soon. And then you have uh, the post by Boxer itself with Clark. You've got Bean on the left and also I believe that's Ben Shalom. Yes, it is um, saying a decorated heavyweight Olympic hero Fraser Clark enters the pro ranks in search of a of world domination following Tokyo 2020 medal. Hashtag chase your future. Hashtag boxer. Hashtag Sky Sports boxing and Clark himself is quoted as saying it's a huge day for me it's been a long time coming since the Olympics I've had a great time and the next step on my journey was to turn professional and I think I've chosen the best outfit in boxer and sky sports to guide me back to the pinnacle where I was an uh, where I was as an amateur I want to get to world titles and everything in between have a fantastic journey and enjoy it along the way and also he is going to be trained by Angel Fernandez. So Angel Fernandez obviously posting that to his social media as well. And the comments here, which I've uh, translated, I take on this challenge with great enthusiasm, desire to work with the discipline that has taken me from the first day I started in this world called boxing. We will work hard and with the intention of continuing to improve day by day at Fraser Clark. So I think um, Fernandez, decent choice of trainer and uh, Fraser Clark uh, choosing to go with Sky and Boxer. And given there's not a huge heavyweight roster um, and not a huge roster overall at Sky Sports at the moment after Matchroom departed, went to DAZN. I think it's probably actually a good choice because when you think about it, they've got Huey Fury, they've got Nick Campbell, and they've got Steve Robinson. You could see Fraser Clark quickly becoming, behind Huey Fury, very quickly, the sort of second tier, uh, heavyweight in that sort of pecking order of four different fighters. And potentially, obviously, Fraser Clark later on, maybe even having a fight with Huey Fury in a couple of years. It'll be a sort of... Uh, 
Joe Joyce sort of situation, I would imagine that they'll give him a couple of years just to sort of build up um, decent fights relatively quickly, probably slightly tougher opposition than had he been five years younger. But we'll see what they can do with Fraser Clark at Sky Sports and Boxer. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.